Welcome back, FNUS57 here. I am back on Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and today I will be bringing you another achievement guide. So in this video, I will be showing you how to unlock the Devoted Follower achievement. What it is is in Ancient Evil, you need to survive the first 20 rounds without leaving the interior of the Temple of Apollo. So this is a 15 gamer score achievement and currently has a 0.04% unlock rate. Uh, it is a little bit deceiving because it does say without leaving the interior of the temple, but you can go in the outside area of the temple as long as you don't leave technically the starting area. So basically you can't buy any of the doors. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to unlock this. I have tested it a couple of different ways and proven that you don't need anything special. But basically, depending on how you set up for this achievement is going to determine how easy it is for you. So I will show you the easiest way, in my opinion, to do this. But of course, you can use whatever you would like. First of all, I would recommend that you do select the difficulty casual and then select the map ancient evil because obviously this has to be done on that map go ahead and hit solo match and at this point you can either invite your friends in which obviously having some extra guns with you would be nice or you can add bots if you want you can add up to three additional bots, which will make it a lot easier on you, except you will not be able to do things like save a zombie, and you will have to be very careful that you do not step outside of the immediate area of the starting zone, the temporary, basically, uh, area. Because the bots, according to some of my friends, have, quote, been able to open doors. I have never seen this personally happen, but... I just don't like to play with bots. The best way to do this is to have a second player with you. In this case, sadly, I am by myself for the purposes of this guide. And I will go ahead and show you what I have. Now, obviously, I've played zombies a little bit. So you can do several different things. My second tip is to make sure that any of the weapons that you have, go ahead and have attachments on those weapons. And if at all possible, if you have them unlocked, make sure that you have any attachments that increase the damage against heavy enemies and mini boss enemies, or just increase the damage for like headshots and things like that. Also increased magazine capacity is very good to have. And I do recommend that you set up your class to start with the Strife Pistol. I have the Mark II. All that does is give me an XP bonus. Obviously, I, by this point, I have all the attachments unlocked for it. If you don't have the attachments for the pistol, this is still doable. But I do recommend heavily that you run the attachments that you see here. You don't have to run an optic, I just like to run it. The stiletto knife is a must, FMJ and extended mags are a must, and then it's dealer's choice for the final perk. I chose FMJ too because our biggest problem is going to be the armored enemies and going to be the mini boss because this is one of the most annoying maps that I have had the privilege of playing on. Now, once you have your weapon set up, the other thing is going to be your class. Obviously, we will not be able to actually start with any perks unless you used a talisman to do so. Uh, but we're not going to be exiting the immediate area, so we will not have the ability to purchase any perks. For you, it's personal preference. As I said, I do recommend the Strife, and I also highly, highly recommend having Wraith Fire. This is probably the best piece of equipment that you can have for any of the zombies maps because it buys you time. It kills zombies that it touches almost instantly, and you can stand in the middle of it, get your health back, buy a weapon, reload, whatever, and the zombies can't touch you. Plus, you don't do damage to yourself. Uh, normally, I would use acid bombs, but you do damage to yourself with that, and that can get you killed. So obviously, playing on casual is going to give us more health. 
I do not believe you can do the Easter egg on casual. As far as the weapons go, uh, it's really personal preference. I would recommend either the Hammer of Valhalla or the Scepter of Raw. Either one is very good for this. I prefer the Hammer just because you can clear out enemies and mini bosses quickly while gaining a little bit of armor so you won't die as fast. When it comes to elixirs, there's a number of elixirs that you can use. Do not worry if you don't have any of the rare elixirs unlocked. I recommend using the burned out elixir uh, because that acts as a temporary shield for you. Temporal gift is another good one to have on. Uh, if you have it, you could use pop shocks. You could use head scan. Um, you could use arsenal accelerator. They're all decent methods to do it. And you can do it. I've done it. I've gotten to the last zombie on round 20 and then left the game just to make sure that it was doable using just the starting equipment and the starting elixirs. But for the purposes of this video, this is one of the final DLCs for the game. If you're like me, you just want the achievement over with. So we're going to do this slightly differently. I'm going to keep burnt out and I'm going to keep equipment. But then I'm going to use two harder to get elixirs. I'm going to use shields up, which basically gives you a new shield. Now, since we can't leave the starting area, we're not going to be able to build the shield. So this is one way to get the shield and kind of cover your ass without having to build the shield. I'm also going to use a wall power which allows me to get a pack-a-punched gun off the wall. And I'll explain that a little bit more. If you don't have these, don't worry. Once again, you don't have to use them. It's just I'm making this as easy as humanly possible. I would also recommend, if you're going to follow my method step-by-step, step, that you go ahead and make sure you use a talisman, preferably a talisman that allows you to start with a different weapon from a pistol. So I'm using one that allows me to start with an AR. Uh, there are other ones in here that allow you to start with different weapons. There's an epic one, if you have it, that allows you to start with an LMG. Uh, there's a few, whole bunch of different ones. Just use whatever you feel is comfortable and beneficial for you or whatever you have you don't have to use it once again you can do this with all of the starting stuff you don't need anything else now just for anybody who doesn't know if you go to the laboratory you can take your nebulum plasma and you can go ahead and convert it into elixirs and a talisman or have a chance of a talisman um, there's a bunch of different stuff you can do. They run events all the time that uh, sometimes give you extra elixirs or extra talismans. Uh, you can buy Nebulum Plasma if you want. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just farming for it. So don't worry if you don't have that, but that's how you get the elixirs and the talismans. So once you have everything created like I do, I've got my class, I've got my elixirs, I've got my talisman, everything's good to go, go ahead and hit ready up and start the match. Just verify that you are on casual difficulty because that will make it, well, insanely easier for you. Uh, you're going to have this little bit of a cutscene. It really just depends on your load time. The faster your device loads the faster that you're going to be able to get through this. It is skippable, but it is not skippable until the match has fully loaded. Think of this as a uh, glorified loading screen, basically. But I'm going to go ahead and skip that so I don't get any copyright issues. And then, of course, you get the normal black loading screen, and you'll be basically right in the game. Now, it's random. I don't know what AR I'm going to start with. I've tried this a couple times. Uh, sometimes you get really lucky and you get a good AR, sometimes you don't. It's really hit or miss. Goodness me, but you'll notice that uh, I actually got a decent AR this time. I got the KN, which is good. I also have my Strife Pistol, which is good and bad at the same time. Because I want to use the wall power, and this is going to basically be my mini boss killer. So let me show you where you can go in the Temple of Apollo. 
There's this little outside area, which is deceiving because the achievement says for you to stay within the inside of the Temple of Apollo. But if you were to stay within the inside of the Temple of Apollo, this is literally all you have to deal with. This one small area, which is not enough room to work and would probably make the achievement next to impossible. Obviously, remember that you can go ahead and buy the doors if you want, you can buy the door, but I don't recommend it because then if you take just a step outside the door, you won't get the achievement. Also, it seems like all players, actual players, have to remain within this starting area. So you can't buy the door that I showed you. You can't buy these doors here, but you can freely come and buy ammo for your Strife Pistol, run through this area, and you also have this rifle right here. For a cost of 500 <clears throat> so what i'm going to do obviously i don't need this pistol right now i don't like having to do it but i'm going to go ahead and get rid of the pistol and that allows me to go ahead and start the party i recommend getting as many points as you possibly can so meleeing for the kill make sure you repair the window and then just kind of wait till you have enough points to buy your pistol back again so we'll go ahead and use that we'll buy this and now you'll notice that the ammo for it is 4500 all right that's a very expensive thing to do you don't have to do it once again do not fear if you don't have the elixir to do that especially to spend a wall power elixir on literally just a single achievement is um painful to say the least but we want to get this done as fast as possible so right now i have a really good gun i've got my ak with all my attachments on it remember i cannot get ammo for it except for max ammos and i have my strife pistol which as you've seen i have two different fmjs i have fmj1 and fmj2 on it and i can buy ammo for it right here plus since it is a wall power buy I can go ahead and have the pack-a-punch upgrade on it. Now, the reason why I did that, it makes it so much easier. Basically, every one of these zombies, for quite a few number of rounds, you're going to be able to one-shot just by meleeing them. Now, that does two things for you. Not only does it give you more points and more XP, which obviously will be buying ammo that's more expensive, so... We need to have as many points as possible, but it also makes it easier because we get a damage bonus. If I was to melee like this, obviously it's not going to one-shot a zombie because we're on round three. But the stiletto knife attachment makes your melee even stronger. On top of that, because the gun is pack-a-punch through the wall by elixir, it makes the melee even stronger. But just play like normal, watch your back, try not to get trapped on anything. Be careful. Um, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally grab a nuke. While you do want to go through the round as fast as possible, you don't want to end the round with getting a minimal number of points. If you are using this strategy here, where you go in and you have a pack-a-punched weapon. If you are using a normal strategy where you don't use a pack-a-punched weapon, then really points are of absolutely no concern to you. The reason being is ammo is cheap. Ammo is very cheap for this starting rifle and also for the pistol. But it's not cheap for me due to the fact that I have to a pack a punched weapon so I will be paying the 4500 cost but basically we're not really going to shoot anything uh, sadly because we can't get the artifact we can't use the challenge of Apollo if we could get the artifact that would be phenomenal because free challenges which would also lead to the potential for free pack a punched weapons perks points uh, even possibly Pegasus strikes if you have that crafted see right there i got a nuke we don't want to do that we don't want to pick that up basic zombies 101 we want as many points as possible so i'm going to make sure that i 
melee kill the zombies. Gonna try and repair a couple windows. Now that the round's changed and there's no zombies left, I'll go ahead and pick up the nuke for the extra points. It's also a good idea pretty early on to go ahead and get your special weapon charged. Don't really play around with it too much unless you absolutely need to. And I tend to spend most of my time in this little area. You don't have to spend most of your time in this area. Obviously, as I said already, you can run around here, which is pretty easy. Do be careful because that's a zombie spawn point right there. So you can sometimes get pinned coming around that corner or coming around there. Again, that's why I love having this stiletto knife with the upgraded damage from Pack-a-Punch. And I Pack-a-Punched it with the elixir basically so we're just going to build up a few points play zombies as you normally would I've already got 10,000 points do be careful in this area a few uh pro tips for you watch out right here at the altar it's very easy to get trapped on either side of that altar by one zombie and watch out for this area right here at apollo's flame once again, very easy to get trapped by one or more zombies and not be able to escape, especially if you are not using a upgraded weapon and you do not have a shield. If you don't have some way to block that damage, it's very easy for one or two zombies to pin you and kill you. Keeping in mind that if you are playing solo, obviously you have your self-revive, especially playing on the easy difficulty. You actually have two self-revives. Uh, now, if you have other players with you, there's a good chance that the other players will actually be able to revive you. But make sure that none of the other players step beyond these little areas. Uh, if you are using Temporal Gift, which is a default starting elixir, then you can actually save yourself a little bit of aggravation and you can make the insta-kills last longer. So once again, it depends on what you want to do with the achievement. There is another achievement on this map that directly counters the devoted follower achievement that we're working on right now, and that is for rekindling Apollo's flame fully before or by round 15. That one's actually rather difficult to do, I already have that one done, but that one cannot be done at the same time as this achievement. So just keep that in mind. The rest of the achievements, if you wanted to get the gauntlets and whatnot, you could go ahead and do them at the same time. Uh, another tip, you can go ahead and maximize your double points by keeping a zombie trapped behind the wall, and the zombie will just pull the boards off and you just keep rebuilding the boards. It's a super easy way to get a few extra points, and then right before the two times ends, you just melee the zombie and kill him. Now, obviously, I've gotten pretty lucky here. So, it's already round seven. Um, I've got my pistol. I've got my rifle. I'm pretty much good. I have not used any other elixirs yet. You don't want to get a shield too early on. You can attempt to do the other achievement for killing the mini boss using only the shield, but it's very glitchy if you use the shields up. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now you'll notice even though I have all of these damage upgrades, I have everything that I possibly can have in my favor. It is taking more than one melee to kill a zombie here on round seven. So just keep that in mind, you're going to be spamming the button to melee if you are going to do this technique where you melee a lot. Uh, if you have a elite controller or a scuff controller, you want to remap your melee to one of the paddles underneath the controller. It'll make it a lot easier for you. I really do want to get a scuff controller because I'm using a standard microsoft controller and yeah there's a lot of clicking also my apologies if you can hear that so once again finish the wave grab the nuke there's a free 400 points for us Might as well be good riddance. 
we will have to go ahead and start shooting pretty soon, which is where I have the AK. Now remember, we cannot get ammo for the AK outside of a max ammo, which it's sometimes a good idea to run a weapon with a suppressor on it. That's why, as you can see, my AK does have a suppressor on it. Again, try to get headshots if you can. Headshots are going to give you more points. They're also going to give you more XP than a body shot, but melee gives you the most. Now, another thing to keep in mind, the reason why I said earlier that this map was probably my least favorite of the ones I've had the pleasure of playing on is due to our friends right there, those little skeletons. Those little skeletons and the mini boss. This map basically has everything that you could possibly want to kill you. So you have the Blight Father, which is really annoying. I wasn't actually aware that that could even spawn on this map, but he can. Normally, he shows up by about round 14. As you can see, we just got a max ammo. Plus, we have these armored skeletons, which are really annoying because they do exactly that. They regenerate. Max ammo. And the reason why they regenerate is just to really annoy the piss out of you. <laughs> But as you can see, I have a suppressor, and the reason why I have a suppressor on most of my ARs that allow me to have one is due to the fact that that gives you a slightly increased chance of dropping a power-up when you kill an enemy with it, which is very helpful when you're doing something like this. So keep in mind, you know, it's still going to take two melees for a while to kill these zombies. We can use the AR if you want. That's a tip for these skeletons. They have a longer range, unfortunately, than a regular zombie. There's several different types of skeletons. Don't be afraid to reverse your route either. Uh, here's one of the skeletons that's super annoying because he's got a helmet on. So that's why, again, I use FMJ. FMJ just completely shreds the armor. You don't even have to really worry that they had armor in the first place it's also going to allow us to do a lot more damage to the mini boss enemies but yeah keep a suppressor on your weapon keep fmj on your weapon try to make sure you kill all the zombies inside the playable area so you have the best chance of getting them to actually drop a power up and of course if you kill them with the weapon with the suppressor on it then you have a even better chance of them actually dropping you a power up but there's lots of stuff that'll kill you on here there's the skeletons that'll kill you there's the regular zombies that'll kill you which are just you know annoying enough by themselves there's the blight father which the really only annoying thing about him is he just is a bullet sponge uh, plus he can put that nasty vomit on the weapon wall by so you might have to waste 500 points to clean that up which is again why we're focusing on getting points and there's no perks for us sadly unless you were to use like a perk up elixir but this will be a cakewalk if you prep for it like I did without the upgraded weapons and elixirs and everything it's still doable I did it it's just more aggravating and you really can't afford to make a mistake uh, another thing you see these skeletons that actually have the shield you cannot shoot through that shield it's super frustrating because they block your bullets they block your bullets for all of the zombies that are behind them and like i said earlier skeletons even though this gun has fmj on it well actually i'm not it should have fmj on it but uh, they block your bullets even from pack-a-punched weapons, which, in my opinion, is super freaking frustrating. And they also wear helmets. So, just kind of play safe and sane. Don't try to overplay your hand, even with an insta-kill. Insta-kill is nice, but you don't want to go down and die because uh, you were trying to melee the zombies. 
Just common sense like any normal zombies game. Go ahead and get as many points as you can. And move on from there. I'm already at 30,000 points. I haven't really had to spend much. I've spent about 1,000 points total this game. And that was simply to get my pistol back. Since there's no way to just drop a weapon on the ground. I still haven't used my shield. Which I can if I want to. And you'll pretty much be two-tapping these zombies with the melee if you have everything that I have right now. You can kind of draw the skeleton back into the door and get around them. I really don't like the skeletons. There's only one way really to keep them from regenerating. Technically two ways to keep them from regenerating. If you kill the skeleton with a headshot, the skeleton will not regenerate. If you kill the skeleton with a stiletto knife, the skeleton, I'd say, has a 50-50 chance of regenerating. So just keep that in mind. But the skeletons, super annoying. Obviously, we have the catalyst elemental zombies that you've had to deal with on previous maps. We had them back on 9. They're still here. They're still just as annoying as they were before. You also have the Blight Father, which I already covered, and I'll show you how to deal with him when we get one. But then you have a new mini-boss. Spoiler alert, you might want to just pause the video if you haven't already fought one. And there is an achievement associated with killing him only using Apollo's Will, which is the shield in this game. Like I said, it's very buggy when you use shields up, but there is a chance you can get the achievement that way. It's a Giganes or... Something like that, I do believe, is the name of it. It's basically like a multi-armed shield spear chucker. Highly annoying. Highly deadly. You will have to fight one. If you're super unlucky, you'll have to fight two before you're finished with this achievement. If you are insanely lucky, you will only have to fight one uh, one of my friends did get the achievement, and he said that he did not actually have to fight a single one of those mini-boss enemies. I'm not sure if he just got super lucky, or if because he was using the same technique that I'm demonstrating here, he just didn't notice that he actually had one of those mini-bosses spawn. Basically, conserve as much ammo as you can, earn as many points as you can. You will need them later. It might seem like overkill. I know some of you are thinking, oh my god, you're insane. You just made this game too easy on yourself. As I said, I will show you the easiest way, the most efficient way to get the achievement. That is what I am here to do. I'm not here to make this any more difficult on myself or you guys. I am also not editing anything out. This is all done as one playthrough. Simply to show that there is no hidden tricks. There's no alteration. This is not multiple playthroughs. Nothing's pieced together. I did everything at once. Now obviously here we go. We've got a max ammo. They do periodically drop. So, if you do get a max ammo, I recommend you let it sit for a minute. If you have any of the catalyst zombies transform into the blue water zombies, get rid of them as fast as freaking possible. Go ahead and grab your max ammo. You don't want that to disappear. Pretty much just like any other zombies game, prioritize. The targets that are well gonna kind of eat your brains. Don't try to train in this spot. You'll probably get pinned and killed. If you're gonna shoot, try to shoot here when you come through the door, because you'll line up most of the zombies on the wall. Obviously, we're going for points, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, melee a bit. Make sure that weapon's reloaded. 
Now, I know you're saying that I'm insane. I've got a stupid amount of points right now. That's true. I do have a stupid amount of points. But that is only enough to buy ammo for my pistol 10 times. That red flash that you've seen right there, that is how you know that a skeleton is not going to respawn. Like I said, you can kill them permanently with a headshot the first time, pretty much any weapon, or there's a 50-50 chance that they won't respawn if you kill them with a stiletto bayonet. I'm exhausted. I won't be worrying about points here shortly because we're on round 14. This is where if you're going to get a blight father, you're probably going to get one at least one. They're nasty. I hate them. I don't know why they're even in the game. I wish they weren't in the game. They grab you. They spit on things. They're tanky as all hell. They're made almost even tankier. He's going to spit right there on my ammo wall by because he can. He'll probably spit on both ammo wall buys again because he can. If you don't know how to deal with one of them, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and shoot his little vomit sack thing. I've saved him simply due to the fact that I didn't want to end the round. Now I'm going to try to ignore the regular zombies and I'm just going to pour rounds into his back. I did end up killing all of the zombies sadly. As you can see a nuke doesn't do shit to him. And we got another nuke from him. Low, 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 my gun, empty as can be. I don't need to worry about cleaning this wall by. So I'm not. I'm just going to let it sit there. Remember, since this is a guide, if you do have any questions, comments, anything like that, do not be afraid to ask. I will always do my best to help out. You can kind of lure zombies from both directions into that wraith fire like I said wraith fire is probably the best piece of tactical equipment that you can use gotta be careful with those nukes we don't want to actually end the round prematurely you'll also notice that we're getting to the point where meleeing really is not a viable option anymore one two three stabs even with all my upgrades only two zombies left we'll go ahead and just grab the nuke Let's see you get through this. Actually, no, I'll be somewhere else. so I will also now use my burnt out elixir this gives you a little bit of a shield just because if a zombie melees you then well it activates and it'll kill anything in the immediate vicinity except for obviously the special mini boss enemies I'll kind of get a few zombies built up here. I'm going to let one slap me. Bam. And as you can see, it activated and just murdered like three zombies for me. Once again, even though I have a upgraded gun, we're going to try to play a little bit conservatively. So go for headshots. We don't want to waste ammo. I can waste ammo, but I don't want to. It's not that I can't afford to do it. It's just I really don't want to. And we'll get rid of him. Eh, one magazine left. 
I'll buy ammo. Obviously, I don't have any ammo left in my AK. Like I said, that's the bad thing. If you are going to do this, your secondary weapon pretty much is not going to be used that much. It's basically going to be your strife pistol that's going to carry you through this. You can use that Wraith Fire to your advantage. Like I said, super easy, super effective way to kill the zombies. It doesn't insta-kill the skeleton, sadly, so do keep that in mind. There is a high chance that a skeleton will respawn if you try to kill it with Wraith Fire. Uh, their shields are also bulletproof. I know I mentioned that earlier, but their shields are bulletproof. Pretty much all their armor is bulletproof because the devs felt like making bulletproof armor. Yay. There's our friend. So it looks like I'm going to get unlucky this game. Oh, actually, uh, the mini boss didn't spawn, thankfully. That was just the fire, dude. Don't forget that you have equipment and you do have your shields up, which both of those can be lifesavers, especially if you are running the same equipment and the same setup that I'm running. You can get a few extra hits if you want by meleeing a couple zombies be very careful because you can get yourself in a very sticky situation just like I did there so melee eh, it's fun but it's a death sentence usually for you just as much as whatever you're meleeing now I got really lucky right there I just got myself a max ammo so I'm standing in the wraith fire as I said I'm not going to do damage to myself I'll get rid of that bam grab that That max ammo couldn't have come at a better time for me. Now it's round 19. If I'm lucky, I'm not going to get the mini boss. But RNG is not always on my side. You kind of have to zigzag when you exit the door. Luckily, they do the zombies so that they're not um, right on top of each other, usually. Like I said, careful, that is a zombie spawn point to the right. You get kind of in the middle there and, you know, turn around, pop a few heads. Get rid of the special zombies if there's a catalyst zombie there. You kind of come around this corner, deal with the skeleton, see what we got. We got an insta-kill. That's nice. Insta-kill is nice. I can use my secondary weapon here. Yes, it's a weapon that I don't get ammo for. That's true. But the thing about this is it is a weapon with a suppressor on it, which means that I have a higher chance of dropping a power-up by killing a zombie with it. Now, obviously, it's round 20. Where's our achievement? Well... The achievement actually technically pops when you finish round 20. It does not pop at round 20. I'll be somewhere else. So just kind of waiting. I'm waiting for this mini boss. He And there he is. Our six-armed pain in the freaking ass 
friend. He's fast. He hurts. He can stun you. I'm not going to get the achievement, so I'm not going to use my shields up because I shot him, which really sucks because I didn't mean to shoot him. But like I said, he's really a fast enemy. He's right there. Ooh, insta-kill. That's actually, like, helpful. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, remember, since he is a mini-boss, he throws spears at you. Dodge the spears if you can. If you don't want to get hit by them. He also has a shield blast attack. It does not do a lot of damage. But it is very annoying because it stuns you. Don't fight him too much, he will take half your health. If you're playing on normal, he can basically two-shot you. But bring him down as fast as you can. Obviously, I had an insta-kill there with a pack-a-punched pistol with FMJ and FMJ2 on it. So in terms of difficulty, well, I didn't even have to use my shields up. Like I said, this can be done with all starting equipment. You do not have to use the rare elixirs. As soon as you kill the final zombie for round 20, round 21 pops up, you'll get your achievement, ding, congratulations, you are 15 gamer score, higher than what you were before. There you go, devoted follower, done, in Ancient Evil survived the first 20 rounds without leaving the interior of the Temple of Apollo. Now if you want from here, you can continue to go ahead and play, you can run around, you can open the doors. You can go ahead and get the artifact if you want. Um, I mean, I suppose you could attempt to do the Easter egg if you wanted to. The only problem is you're already on round 20 and you haven't even started a single step of the Easter egg. So that's a very expensive step if you want to do that. Otherwise, it's pretty much you wasted your elixir if you were going to use your elixir. But... Like I said, it is personal preference entirely. What you would like to do, you can get yourself uh, in a bit of a sticky situation depending on where you're at. Obviously, don't forget, as you play through, you have your special weapon. If you're not using a pack-a-punched weapon like I was there, your specialist weapon is going to be one of the best things to actually take out that mini-boss with. But it's just up to you. You can use whatever you want and you're pretty much done now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. I hope the video helped. If it did, please make sure you smash that like button and go ahead and share the video with your friends as that greatly helps me out with the searchability of videos here on YouTube. Until next time, as always, stay frosty.